Today we're going to connect an outlet to a switch. Stay tuned. There's an outlet down here on the floor. We want to connect the switch to it. The switch is going to go here, alongside the door. The light switches in this house are 48 inches. So we're going to make the same here in this room. Now I've made a mark here. I'm just going to show you it's 48 inches. We've got a two by four running here. I remember that from when I did this patch. And there's an open cavity here. I've already run a couple of wires into here because I anticipated doing this job ahead of time. Now it's time to cut out the box since we've decided exactly what we're going to do. So let's drill a hole here. Okay, so now I got my box here. I can set it there and I can make a mark where I want to cut on this side. Jigsaw. Bunch of stuff that you don't realize is in the walls of these old houses. Wait till I dig this out. Yes, you can see it. I'm pulling an electrical box out of the wall. Back in the days when they were knob and tube. Now the knob and tube obviously has been cut out. There was a light switch in here at one time. Okay, so there's one wire, two wires. The wire, this wire down here, is run down to here, underneath, and I'm going to run that to the outlet on the wall. And this one here is a wire that goes up, is a wire that goes up to this beam here, where we're hoping either we're going to put a light up here or a light up here. But that's what this wire is for. I'm going to run it into the box, and I'll make those connections later. Originally, when we had the plan. It was going to be either one or the other. I was either going to run this wire from a power source down in the basement to power the lights that were going to be on the ceiling, or I was going to use this wire coming from the outlet on the wall as an interrupter with a switch. But now that we've decided that we're going to incorporate both, I need a power wire coming up from the bottom. Do you ever come across one of these things? Buy them. It's an electrician's drill. These things are amazing. This one here is uh, six feet tall. What it allows you to do, because it's got a certain flexibility to it, is to do just this. I'm gonna creep it through the wall, down to the floor, drill through the floor, and it's gonna come out the basement. There's also a hole here. And when I do get this through, I'm gonna leave it there, disconnect it from the drill, and then I'm gonna connect my wire to it. So when I pull this bit, this whole bit back out, I'll be pulling the wire up with it too. Here we go. All right, we're on the floor. Okay, down we go. Just like that. Okay. I'm gonna have to take my word. There it is, coming out of the floor. I see the hole. I'm gonna thread, try to thread the ground wire with the cable that I'm gonna pull up through that hole. Hmm, wish me luck. I gotta put the camera down. I got really no place to mount it here. So here's what I got I got it through, and I got it threaded. Uh, you can see it. And then it's connected to the wire. Now I tape it all up to give it a nice taper so it's, I don't want it to snag on anything. So hopefully, when I pull this up, I'm getting a little twisting motion as well to get it back through the hole. Who knows if it broke? Doesn't feel like it because I got a lot of resistance. There's my wire. Wow. Okay, let's cram this in here.
Looks a lot easier than I thought it would be. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna put a couple screws in here just to get it secured. And push it in there. Okay, we've got our box in there. Once you've disconnected the power, there's really only one thing to do here. You want to make this a split plug. Right now, the way that it's wired up, yeah, it's dead. <laughs> I had to touch it to make sure. As it sits right now, what's happening here is that the black wire is giving power to this circuit and it's tied over to the other one by this brass clip. Now what I want to do is I just want to break that brass clip clean off. There it is. Make sure that these are not touching at all. I even pry them apart even further with a screwdriver. Right, so this, now you know that that's safe. So if I turn on the power again, this outlet is going to be energized, but this one will not because it's not receiving any hot. Okay, I'm gonna feed this wire up here. Hopefully, I got a clear path to bring it right through. There. Look at that. That's a nice idea. Nice. Okay, so let's steer this away here. zoomed in on the outlet just to show you how our wiring is going to work. The wire that we're running to the switch will be used as an interrupting wire. And it's quite simply going to take the power that is going to be coming out of this hot terminal to the switch and returning back through the black to energize the top receptacle. So I'll get this back inside the box and we'll uh, wire up the switch. Once you have your wire over, if ever you have to do this, and sometimes you have to, always go over your 2x4s with some kind of steel plate. And what this is going to do is it's going to prevent uh, inadvertently putting a nail into it, right? So, so I'm going to put it right around there. Okay, so let's get a screw ready. There we go. That's a done deal. When I make these connections here, remember that we connected the white wire to the power source or the hot on the other side. And the hot goes inside because I want it to be on the bottom. These things are really, really cool. The little gold part, that's always the top. So if you put this in the top, then on is pressed here and off is pressed there. So the white goes in the bottom because that is our power coming in. And the top is where it's going to, back to that outlet. And check out other related videos that I've got on electrical and plumbing and mechanical and gadgets and all kinds of stuff because at odd jobs we get into everything that'll work